What's going on guys? My name is Dre and if you don't recognize the man right next to me, Mr. Demetrius Porter, thank you for stopping by. Thanks for hanging out. You and I have been wanting to sit down and chat for a while about Sensor Cork, which is your new wine. So I'm super excited that you're here. Topic of conversation obviously is going to be that. Um, but first, can we pour some? Because I want to Absolutely. taste it. So first we're going to pour our latest wine, which is our Red Zinfandel. Uh, it's called the Season Opener. I named it the Season Opener because the new holidays are coming. Uh, and so new season, new fall season, new winter season. So I want to uh, name it something that uh, is significant to the new holidays that are coming our way. All right, so let's cheers before we talk some more about this. Mm -hmm. And I have to be honest with you, I'm not really a wine person, especially red wine because I'm not really a fan of the bitterness, but I've been told, you know, go wine tasting. So this is kind of my wine tasting today. That actually was not bad at all. Yes. Like I could definitely take a bottle of that and enjoy the night. Uh, you mentioned this one is called Season Opener. Season Opener. I noticed that all of your wines have some kind of sports name. Yes. I know why, yeah. obviously, but explain to people why you, you use those, those kind of names. So I use names to... Uh I use basketball name. Everyone knows me from basketball, mm -hmm. so I didn't want to get away from that. I learned about wines from playing professional basketball over in France. Okay. Uh, that's where this kind of started from. Uh, once I left Fresno State, I went over to France where I learned about wine from a, a veteran of mine. Uh, before games, we always drank wine before. And, um, you know, being from America, I was kind of baffled. I was like, hey, man, when, when we don't drink before, before right. games. But uh, the, little, the vet told me, you know, so you come over to the house and let me teach you about wine. So he started telling me the, the health benefits of it. Okay. And it grabbed my attention. And so during this COVID, I had a chance to actually sit down and uh, figure out this is something I want to try to explore. Now, when you say you would drink wine before a game, how soon before a game were you drinking so, wine? So, you know, pregame meal <laughs> would be two hours prior to. And we oh, would, okay. Uh, you know, have, have a team glass meal, or something? and then you'll have glass a glass. Of wine? Yeah. Okay. But again, like I said, I named each bottle after something that that came from basketball. So, again, season opener. Uh, it's the beginning of the fall season when most basketball seasons uh, start, mm -hmm. and a lot of people drink red Zinfandel for Thanksgiving, Christmas, and those those family holidays. So that's where the word season opener came from. Uh, name this center cork. So. I mean, cork side, actually. Cork that's, side that's or court side? Cork. Okay, just cork like the name. Side. Okay, got so it. Cork side, you know, uh, this is a red blend. Um, you know, when you sit cork side, you're very important. So, this was my second one after my uh, initial one and done. Uh, I came out with the cork side to make people feel special and, and feel like uh, they're the MVP of the game. Not only do the names relate to basketball, which is something that you've loved mm -hmm. damn near your whole life. Mm -hmm. There, there are additional meanings, or there's yes. kind of underlying meanings to, yes. to the name, like you said, exactly. with this one, you know, you want to feel yeah, so important. My first, yeah, yeah, so my first uh, release was my one and done. Mm -hmm. uh, one and done, the reason I named it one and done, because most elite players can jump from college to the pros in one year. Okay. And so I wanted my grand opening to be that prestigious, you know, and so that's why I came with one and done. And another reason is that particular wine won't be re-released re, re until next year. Oh. So if you didn't get it this year, you have to wait a whole So that was year. a full business plan. It like, you knew full, what you were doing when yeah, you released that one. It was a full business plan. <laughs> um, you know, uh, so that one was to, 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 to let people know I'm here and uh, we we're here to stay. Those grapes that were in one and done uh -huh. won't be harvested until January. So okay. So you can't even, you know, that's why I learned in the, in the wine business thus far is that you do have to wait for different harvests, different mm -hmm. seasons for different wines. And so that one uh, was a was a great blend that you would have to wait till the following year to get in the Got it. So obviously that's part of the process of making, creating this wine. What are other steps of the process and how involved are you in them considering this is yours? I'm very involved. Um, I had over 20 people taste before I even came out with it. Who were um, those people? Uh, friends, family, friends, or, okay, family. Okay. Um, you know, everyone has their preference, mm -hmm. but you just want to kind of find a medium. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I did with the most of these, found the medium as to what everyone was like, eh, you know, so uh, that's how I came up with the ones. Um, 
you know, again, I want to have some that was red wine to start off with for the health benefits. Mm -hmm. um, red wine also pairs well with food, uh, and this is the season for red. You know, red usually, season for red is usually goes uh, to the new year, from now okay. to the new year. You have released more than just these two, correct? Yeah, I have released three totals, three so totals. the one and done. Uh, this one, uh, the cork side, and season opener. Okay. Uh, our next release, we will be releasing in the future uh, Moscato, which is called a crossover because we go from dark Stop. to light. Stop. Yes. So we have That's the, genius. Yeah. <laughs> so we have the crossover because we're going from dark to light. Okay. Uh, we have rosé because, to me, it seems like something you celebrate, so we're calling that the tip-off. So we named that the tip-off. And then we have uh, the organic Cabernet. Okay, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, the, and that is something totally different from all of us, so we call that the skybox. You know, where you up away from everybody. I and love it. You're in your own box, your own world. So you talked about being in France, and that's kind of what got you into this wine thing, mm -hmm. but obviously it took you some time to, to be able to get to the level of creating your own wine. Why did you want to create that wine? Was it just because of the experience that you had, or was it just kind of some itching at you for a while? No, the experience, and I saw how wine brought people together. Okay. You know, which is weird, but uh, I've always played a team sport. Mm -hmm. I've always been around people, and uh, I'm a social bug myself, so wine seemed like it was a always used for a celebration or a time to bring people together. Okay. And so that's why I kind of wanted to do it, especially at the time when I was like, I wanted to move forward with this. We were in the COVID mm -hmm. and we couldn't see our families. We couldn't see our friends. And so it was kind of the perfect time to come up with something that kind of unified everyone. About two weeks ago, I think you posted something along the lines of being sold out. Mm -hmm. People who know you, they like you, they want to support you. Obviously, that led to you being sold out. What does that support mean to you, and how does it just make everything that much better? It means a lot, because I was very fearful when I first came out. Didn't with, know, with, with the wine? With the wine. Okay. I didn't know how Fresno would take it, how much support I would get. Okay. But um, I sold out in six weeks. It's insane. Insane. And so... Uh, even this bottle so far, we, we, we've been selling well. And so um, it's been going way better than what I thought, honestly. I, I, I didn't think it was going to take like this. I heard that you hand deliver some bottles. Yeah. Uh, I sent you a video of someone that I know who was super excited that when he ordered a bottle of wine, the next day you showed up to deliver it. Little things like that make a big impression on a business yes. so why is that important for you to you know just connect with your your client like it, that it's very important because fresno is a small community and to me fresno we're family and so when the, the customer supported me i wanted to personally thank them myself by delivering it to them myself and, you know a lot of them were shocked like wow the owner is right. delivering and as, as long as i can i want to continue to do that you know because it's a thank you to them and you know, you're developing a relationship, building, a, building another relationship that can last and continue to grow your business. All right, so you finished yours. Let me finish this last drink. But while I finish this, I do want to ask you, is this made locally? No, it's actually come from Sonoma uh, okay. in Harrisburg. Uh, I connected with a guy by the name of Dave Scheitz, who, who is from Fresno. Okay. But he owns a winery out in the northern region. And uh, we connected. Uh, it's kind of weird. I'll, I'll tell you this quick story how it all came about. So my assistant coach at Washington Union, the year that we won a state championship, mm -hmm. uh, worked for a wine company, got into wine heavy, and uh, I saw a post that he, he paired a food and some wine together. Mm -hmm. I said, Ken, I'm interested in starting my own private label. Can you help me? And so he connected me to Dave, who was also okay. a local guy, but his winery again is out in Hillsburg okay. in Northern California. So, so talked to Dave, we did our tasting and came up with the right taste that we want. And nine months later, we're here. That's actually not a long time spent, the whole process. It was a quick process yeah. for you. So with something that moves that quickly, how are you, I guess, were you prepared for it? No, you, know? you, you never prepare for it. But after it happens, you hope your second, third, fourth, fifth bottle um, is as tasteful first mm -hmm. you know i had got a lot of great comments from those who have uh, tasted and so you want to back it up with great quality wine um 
So you're always kind of hoping that this one hits like that one. So when you got that great feedback from the first release, which was a one and done, correct? Mm -hmm. Was that when you said, okay, we're going to go ahead and do the second one? Or did you have this planned out? So no. you waited for Yeah, I knew the what I wanted. I knew I had a list of ones that I wanted, specific uh, flavors. Okay. Uh, so, and I'll pour this because, because of one and done, I wanted to come up with something that's pretty similar to the one and done. Okay. Um, and this is the Kube is another red blend, which the one and done was. So, um, again, this one is a little bit more drier, a little bit more spicy. This, this one, one, the one that soft. you just poured? Yeah, a little okay. sweeter. Cheers. Cheers. Ooh. It's different. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's, I mean, like I said, I am not a huge fan of wine, but I could definitely do this all day. Mm -hmm. I could finish a bottle. Yeah, so, so for me, I wanted to create something that went down smooth, that didn't leave a burn, didn't leave an aftertaste. And so that... This is proof of it yeah, right here, that, yeah. That, that was the goal. Uh, so when I was drinking wine, I was drinking some of the other brands, and some of the brands kind of left a heartburn. Okay. Like, oh, man, what's that about? Yeah. So when I created this, one thing I didn't want is for people to have to... You know, just like feel like yes. the cotton mouth, feel yes. like um, their mouth was dry. So yeah. I wanted to create something that went down smooth and didn't leave a burn and has high alcohol content so you can really get your buzz from from what I'm hearing. Uh, from what I'm hearing. From what you I'm haven't, hearing. You haven't tested no, it? No, I have tasted it, but, you know, I, I always listen to the consumer. Yeah. The consumer loves the, 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 the soft taste, but the, the big impact. The hit. The hit. <laughs> the hit. Yes, for sure. Um, I also noticed on Facebook that you had posted something about donating a basket to Lady Heat. Yes. So which I'm, is your yeah. AAU team or an organization yeah. that you run, right? So I run a nonprofit called Exposure Sports. Mm -hmm. And we have boys and girls ages of uh, 10, 10 to 17 years. And okay. so we've been working with them, helping them go on their scholarships through athletics. And so it does cost. So I donate off each sales a portion to that cause to continue our kids in the Valley uh, getting scholarships. Um, actually, we just had one today, you know, so uh, we just want to keep giving them the opportunity and the platform to receive scholarships. I met you at this point a couple years ago, I think, and I bought into what you do. I enjoy watching you, what you, watching what you do, you know, and, and helping these kids get into college. Why? Is it so, why is that aspect of it so important for you? Is it, obviously I know you grew up in Fresno, didn't have a lot, so giving back, why is that so important? Uh, giving back is because one, I was those kids and someone came and gave back to me. And so I'm not, I wouldn't be pouring wine if I didn't have that platform to um, expand my life or to, mm -hmm. um, you know, to, to, to go to another level. So. I want to give every, all the kids, as many kids as I can, the same opportunity to start their life fresh. You know, with a basketball scholarship, you don't leave college with debt. Mm -hmm. You know, most uh, people leave debt with with thirty thousand, forty thousand dollars debt, yeah. being in their thirties and forties still paying uh, student loans. So I want to give them the opportunity to, to start their life fresh, get their degrees, and hit the work for force without any any debt. All right. So we talked about why you wanted to create the wine. We talked about the proceeds that go to Exposure Sports per bottle that you sell. If someone wants to buy this wine and taste this amazing wine, where can they find it? They can find it at www.cinecourt.com. Well, thank you so much for hanging out and congratulations on the new wine. I'm definitely gonna finish mine. It's amazing.